Uh, welcome along to today's council meeting on uh, Tuesday the 28th of February. Uh, we'll get underway and uh, thanks to everybody for coming. My name's Dean Reeves, I'm the Mayor of the Rural City of Wangaratta and uh, we're all here. I just want to quickly go around our room to introduce what you know who you're looking at today. Uh, Councillor Fuller, I want to start with you please. Councillor Fuller, City Ward. Councillor Irene Grant, uh, Warby Ward. Councillor Ashley Ward, City Ward. Harry Bustle, Deputy Mayor, Southwood. Mayor McGrath, see ya. I'll be waiting for you. Councillor Jack Harry. Councillor Brindley, Director of Corporate and Pleasure. Stephen Ford, Director of Sustainability and Culture. Marcus Kennedy, Director of Community and Infrastructure. Uh, thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, could I please ask you to stand for acknowledgement of the in our opening prayer? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and the land in which we meet here today, pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and uh, pay my respects to everybody here today in today's meeting, so thank you for being here. Uh, our opening prayer is, Almighty God, we humbly ask thee to bless and guide this council in its deliberations, so that we may truly preserve the welfare of the people whom we serve, Amen. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just under clause 914 of the Governance and Meeting Conduct uh, Local Law provides, provides the following, uh, that this public meeting is being recorded to improve access to the meeting for our community. The recording will be retained by Council in accordance with Council's legal obligations. And as a visitor in the public gallery, you may be recorded um, by being here today, by your presence. Thank you. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I'll just quickly move through our minutes and uh, get down to the important parts. I'll just move down to uh, item number seven, which is the confirmation of our previous minutes, and I look to uh, Councillor Harvey Benton. I'll move to that the minutes are a true record of what happened on that day. Thank you. Councillor Bustle, Councillor Fitzpatrick to second that recommendation. Uh, are all those in favour? Recommendations carried. Uh, move to item number eight, which is a conflict of interest, and uh, I myself have to disclose the conflict of uh, interest on item 15.1, which is a general conflict. I'll be stepping out of the room while that issue is being discussed. Um, Councillor Fuller. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Also declaring for 15.1, general and material uh, conflict in regards to uh, my sister in the business that might be potentially put up for that conversation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Fuller. Um, we'll move down to item 19.1, which is a petition to Regional Roads Victoria at the intersection of Glen Rowan Road with the Laura Road and Rundle Plain, South Kangaratta. I'll hand over to see you, uh, Thank you. So we have received a petition signed by a number of people in South Kangaratta. Uh, the petition is asking uh, Council to support some changes around the intersections of the Glen Rowan Road, the Laura Road and Arundel's Lane, specifically uh, Turning Lane, uh, and also a speed reduction to 80 kilometres per hour uh, around that intersection. And the recommendation is that this petition uh, is received and it be referred to me for consideration and response. Thank you. Are there any questions on this petition from the gallery? No. Uh, can I look for a mover of this recommendation? Councillor Harry, thank you. And uh, Councillor Fitzpatrick has a second. Councillor Harry, you want to talk to me? Just briefly, thank you, Chair. Um, I'll just say from experience, personal experience, not that I do it often, it's certainly an uncomfortable spot to sit in the middle of the road waiting to turn. So um, it certainly warrants a look in for the roads from a safety perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fitzpatrick. Any other council would like to talk on the recommendation? In that case, uh, with the recommendation of all those in favour of the petition and the recommendations is carried. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll move down to council reports and we'll move to item number 12, 12.1, which is the reappointment of directors to the Langer and Livestock Exchange. Uh, look to Director Bill. Thank you. Um, so we have uh, four directors of the Livestock Exchange whose terms are currently Council and we're keen to um, re elect 
those directors for another two years. Um, that's required that by the council resolution. Um, so um, this report is put forward to the council to endorse that, um, to reappoint the directors listed in the confidential attachments um, for a term of two years, which would commence on the 24th of March 2023, um, to authorise the mayor and CEO to sign and see the record of resolution and um, to disclose the names of the people who have Thank you. Uh, thank you, Director Ridley. Are there any questions from the gallery? No, thank you. I'll look for a mover from Council, please. Councillor Benton and a second to Councillor Branch. Councillor Benton, did you want to talk on the uh, reappointment, please? That's fine. Mr. Leo, I'd just like to endorse the um, Director's comments in relation to the support for what we saw through the people, Council, the operation of the Council, so the lives of the exchanges have been rather beneficial in both um, economic and social. Really done for the upgrade, so. Thank you. Councillor Dane, do you have any questions? Um, well, given that I was an administrator at the time when um, this was all mooted and, and, um, and, and pushed forward, I'm really pleased to see how well um, the Livestock Exchange is doing at the moment um, and acknowledge um, the work of the people um, on, on, the, on the board um, and the work that they've done. Councillor Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. This uh, just highlights a, a business like this how uh, people know that they do reclaim the business and it's gone for 20 something thousand head of per year to about 55,000 head of a year through this uh, livestock exchange. So it's uh, truly amazing to work for them. Thank you. No other councillors. Councillor Benjamin, you want to say anything in the shop? That's the mover. Uh, I think you all put the recommendation to the vote. All those in favour? The recommendation is carried. Director Brindley, did you disclose the names? Yeah, so those are John Baratto, who's the chair, Justin King, Doug James, and Richard. Well, thank you. We'll move on to uh, corporate leisure and 13.1. It's the instrument of delegation to members of council staff. Thank you, Director Brindley. Thank you. Um, so, under the Local Government Act, we use instruments of delegation to pass powers of decision making from the council to the CEO and, um, and from the council to specific members of staff who hold the relevant skills and experience to you know, make decisions on specific matters. Um, so, this report is put to councillors to adopt um, the latest updates to um, the S6 instrument of delegation to members of council staff. That includes um, regarding the management of cemeteries in crematoria, um, planning and environment, and also to incorporate changes following the um, organisational restructure of council where we move from having four directors to three. Thank you. I think you have no questions from the gallery. I'll uh, ask for a mover. Councillor Fuller and Councillor Fitzpatrick. Councillor Fulton, did you want to talk on the delegation? No. Any other Council want to talk? No, in that case, I'll put, the I'll put the recommendation to a vote. All those in favour? The recommendation is carried. Uh, thank you, Director Brindley. 13.2 uh, Council Strategic Plan indicated an actions update for quarter 2 October December 22. Yeah, thank you. So, Council um, adopts at the beginning of its term a four year council plan um, in engagement with the community and consultation with the community which sets out a range of actions and targets that council commits to um, delivering and working towards throughout that term. Um, we then report progress against those actions and targets on a quarterly basis for full transparency and to demonstrate to the community the work that is being undertaken. Um, so this is that standing quarterly report that provides that status update and it's recommended that Council notes the quarter two results for the Council Plan Strategic Indicators and Actions. Thank you. Uh, thank you. No questions from the gallery. I look for a mover, please. Council, Councillor Bussell and Councillor Fuller as a seconder. Uh, any council want to talk on the recommendation? No. no. I'll um, put the recommendation to vote. All those in favour? And the recommendation is carried. 
Uh, Director Brindley, phone point three, the order of Bruce King, meeting independent member appointment, please. Thank you. So again, under the Local Government Act, Council has an audit and risk committee that is responsible for um, you know, providing oversight of council's management of its financial management and management of risks. Um, there is a charter for the audit and risk committee that um, allows us to have a minimum of three and maximum of four independent members. Um, we operate with four independent members um, as much as we can um, to ensure we have a quorum at every meeting and one of, the, one of our members' term has come to an end. So the purpose of this paper is to appoint a new independent member to the Audit and Risk Committee um, that follows a period of advertising the opportunity, uh, shortlisting and interviewing candidates and then making a recommendation to Council. Um, so the um, recommendation is that Council appoints the candidate that's recommended and listed in confidential attachment one for a term of three years um, and um, discloses the successful applicant and notifies the other applicant to Council's decision. Um, thank you, Director. If there's no questions from the Gallery on this issue, I'll look to Council for a move. Thank you, Councillor Bussell, and a second to Councillor Harry. Councillor Bussell, did you need to talk on this being a audit and risk committee member? I don't need to, Mr. Mayor, but I just want to uh, thank these people that uh, yeah. they don't get paid very much and they put a lot of time in to uh, manage the, uh, the finances and all the risks we have. And uh, regularly we struggle to get somebody to do this, but on this occasion there's a great deal of interest in the rules of the work around it, so that's uh, very, very, very helpful. Thank you. Councillor Harry, do you want to say anything? Just as a member of the Order of Music as well. Thank you, Chair, just to reiterate Councillor Russell's comments. Um, I appreciate the observation, but just reiterate that point that sometimes it's in things in terms of applicants that come in. Um, but this certainly wasn't that situation. There was a broad deal, and it certainly wasn't a um, forced choice for lack of uh, tough competition. So uh, I certainly look forward to working with a successful applicant in my role as for the risk of the Thank you, Councillor Harry. There's no other councillors to talk on the issue of the recommendation to the vote. All those in favour? And the recommendation is carried. Director Brindley, can you disclose the other thing, please? Yep, the name of the successful applicant is Jane Watson. Thank you, uh, Director. And final item for you is 13.4, the 2022-23 quarter two forecast review. Thank you. So similarly to the earlier report, um, we are also uh, required under the Local Government Act to report quarterly on um, Council's um, actuals against the adopted budget. Um, so this is the report for the end of quarter two. Um, at the end of December. Um, overall, um, there is a slight improvement to Council's net position. Um, so we have an increase to the accounting surplus of 1.97 million and to the adjusting underlying, underlying operating result of 982,000, um, which is primarily driven by an increase in operating grants, um, particularly um, for the flood recovery work that was recently undertaken. Um, also, um, for the cash balances that we do hold, obviously the, in, the increase in interest rates um, has led to additional interest income above that that was originally budgeted, um, as well as reduced expected depreciation on council assets. Um, those increases have been partially offset also by increases in materials and services to deliver against the operating grant funding that we've received. Um, our capital works expenditures decreased slightly from 39.15 million to 38.09 million, or projected for the year, um, which is a net decrease of 1.16 million. That's principally impacted by revised timelines for just two, um, two more major projects, essentially, which will um, now continue into 2023 and 2024, both of which are also making good progress. Um, and so that's the overall summary and the full recommendations on the screen there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Director. If there's no questions from the gallery, I'll look to someone to move that recommendation. Councillor Fuller and a seconder, Councillor Harry. Um, did any council want to talk on that quarter two forecast? No. I'll put the recommendation to vote. All those in favour? And the recommendation is carried. Uh, 
Ladies and gentlemen, we move on to sustainability and culture on item 15.1, and I'll now hand over to Chair to Councillor Russell. Again, Councillor Hawes and you just wrote this Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, 15.1, the item, both general and material in regards to sibling and their proximity to the conversation in regards to the budget proposal. Thank you. Thank you, and I too uh, disclose that conflict as a general conflict uh, due to having a family member uh, in one of the designs of, uh, of one of the projects that is up for uh, options today. So thank you all for that. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Parts of that site has been developed for different purposes. The remainder or the remaining undeveloped part of the land contains the majority of the unused uh, former college buildings. This part of the land has been identified as an ideal site for social, affordable, and key worker housing development. Um, to facilitate this outcome, Council has uh, gone through an expression of interest process. Um, to call for housing associations to demonstrate how they would develop the land for those purposes. Um, as a result, we received two expressions of interest and Council now needs to uh, select the preferred provider to progress the next stage which involves more detailed discussions with that provider and, and to finalise the form of develop the development proposal. Council should also consider proceeding with the first step in the statutory process to ultimately sell the land to allow for this development, and that's giving notice of Council's intent to sell the land. So the officer's recommendations on the screen, and well, not yet on the screen, um, and in the agenda, it includes endorses in principle the preferred provider for the future development, disclosing the name of the preferred provider, Delegating authority to the CEO to negotiate with that preferred provider and also requires the CEO to report back to Council about the outcome of those negotiations um, and authorizes the CEO to proceed with the statutory process to sell the land. Thank you, Director Stewart. Is there any questions from the um, Please come forward. There's a microphone there. State your name, please. My name is Tony Rizak, um, and I, I'm really new to council meetings, so if the story may address previously, I apologise. But there is the electricity substation right there on the point, and I'm a huge fan of like affordable housing, so yay for more. But have we submitted any safety studies as to the long term consequences of living permanently close to that electricity station? Thank you for the question. Yes, as part of the expression of interest process uh, that has come up in conversation a, a few times, um, we've been reassured that you can be quite close to that substation, but we need to consider certain distances and also you know, what happens right next to it. The more important point is that the next step, if Council decides to go ahead with this tonight, the next step is, is a more detailed design, and that's the, the, the uh, right step for us to really look into that matter in more detail. So no. No, it's not a no. We've had a look at this issue as part of the current expression of interest process, but the next step will allow us to really dig into the detail when it comes to this and other matters. Thank you, Director Sport. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr.
Thanks, Dan. Direct the short. Yeah, look, um, at this stage we haven't thought through you know, exactly what we are going to do as part of the next step. We know that we need to do some detailed negotiations about the form of the development and that you know, could include community consultation. It's important to note that as part of the steps that we take before you actually see development on the ground, there will be a planning permit application process and at that point there will be further community consultation as, as we are required to do. Thank you, Anne. Please come Just uh, in uh, question of giving notice of council's intent to sell a land, can I ask the council, do you set um, a price for that land? Is it open for public option or is it just for the people that are going to actually uh, set up the, the housing on that land? Thank you for the question. Director Schwartz, if you could answer that please, and also the zone. The, 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 the use of that land. The tax limited use is a correct. Yep. Is that part of the question? Well, the question was what, you know, what, what's, what's, what's the price? Yeah, Can anyone give yeah. yeah. it for me? Basically, how's it how's it going to be sold? The yes. Price? Yeah. 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 And you have set the price, mm -hmm. and the people that have been given the contract, do they actually offer something at the price, or is that for public option? That's what I want to yeah. know. Yep. So this step in council, uh, the code recommendation of the officers will allow the CEO to enter into uh, more detailed negotiations with the preferred provider. Part of those negotiations would be exactly that, you know, the price of the land sale. We go through a process where the land is valued by a qualified land valuer, and that gives us, a, I guess, a starting point for that conversation. As part of the statutory process, we have to give um, notice of our intent to sell. The land, and that gives anybody in the community a chance to have to say about that intent to sell the land. So it's not up to public option? It, no. no, it's not up to public op option, but the notice to in, the notice of intent to sell gives everybody an opportunity to have to say about the proposed sale. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Conditions placed on, on this side of the land body education. Yeah, it's probably worth mentioning in relation to that question that when council bought the land from state governments, we bought it with some conditions on how the land could be used, and they are for things like um, community benefit and education and those sort of things. So it can't, the land can't just be sold for commercial use, so it couldn't just go to public auction for anyone to buy, because the users had to comply with the restrictions that were put on when the council bought the land at the time. Thank you. You have a question? Yeah, I was just going to perhaps some clarification of process, but just in relation to maybe the first two questions also, uh, just highlight the fact that this is a very early stage in the process and that it will be the, the normal planning process and notwithstanding that there is a potential for exemptions for various forms of development that we can't preempt those, but there will be likely opportunities for further input from the community um, to explore some of those issues further. Thank you, Councillor Herrick. All right, no other questions? Can I have a minute, please? Councillor Herrick, minute, second one. Councillor Benton. Councillor Herrick, would you like to speak? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try and keep it brief. I guess it's um, it can be somewhat difficult for community members because a lot of the documentation is confidential, understandably, because of the nature of the process and the stage of that process. But just to reiterate, I guess that it's very much early days in the process, and um, it, it is certainly not something that I personally take lightly, and I don't believe any of my colleagues do, the, the dealing with it and sale of public land. Um, it's important to, notwithstanding the limitations of this public land, as CEO McGrath highlighted, it's encumbered in, in some ways and has restrictions on the nature of the development. Notwithstanding that, it's an incredibly unique opportunity, an incredibly important decision for this council to embark upon. And, and I think we, we really must seek to maximise the potential of this opportunity. And, and as it stands, we have 
a couple of options um, on the table. Some of those options are relatively standard and they certainly could be a good proposal, perhaps if they were coming from, originating from a different source and speaking to a different development, say if they were a standard private development, they would be regarded as you know, quite good. However, some of the alternative proposals, particularly the one um, in the recommendation, is uh, potentially transformative and it's extremely innovative and it could possibly put Wangaratta significantly um, ahead of the curveball, I guess, with respect to how we look at and, and consider and think about housing, because we definitely don't have housing down the path in this country. But I, I will catch all of that in um, coming back to the fact that it's very much early days and this is the start of a long process in which a lot of information is going to have to be um, garnered and a lot of a lot of a lot of negotiation work through before we come to a, a, an ultimate decision. Um, so I think I'll leave my comments there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Henry. Councillor Thanks again, Um Yeah, so going through the considering this did it something you need to much of it on the market going forward and there are several discussions internally in the relationship to how this will ultimately be done to others. In a very interesting and it doesn't in the motion recommendation the motion give the community a lot of uh, input going forward and urge you to make sure that you may come aware of that when it comes to the drawing because with the constrictions that are on the uh, constrictions that are on the uh, parcel land becomes rather difficult what council and uh, being an old tech school board, it's been rather disappointing to see that offer being go to where it was and be vacant for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and at uh, least it is going to become of use to the community, even though the, the, I still have some making choice of us going forward that I'll make sure that we are doing the proper thing in the government and uh, something that is negative for the community. The only words that I can give is a council going forward that we are as much involved as possible uh, to make sure this is a, an outcome that is going to be a the whole community. Thank Thanks, Councillor Bridget. Councillor Bridget. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I have to say that I'm approaching the, the recommendation with uh, a huge amount of trepidation, and it's been interesting to hear um, the comments from the floor tonight afternoon at least, um, where people are, are expressing concern about what's going to happen. And, and But what I'm reassured about at the moment is the fact that there's an in-principle um, relationship in this, in the, in the recommendation, and we're going to get more detail because I think this potentially uh, could be one of the um, most exciting, significant um, and, and beneficial projects ever happen in Langaratta. I mean, we've never seen the likes of it before. Um, we don't know what exactly it is at this particular point. But we need to take that step into the, into the future. Um, and, and this proposal tonight, um, this recommendation tonight, actually allows us to take that um, step forward. Um, I'd, I'd like to see a lot more detail because um, it potentially I said could be one of the best things we've ever seen, but it could also be the most terrible and overblown and over, overdeveloped uh, site in Wangaratta. So, one step forward, and I look forward to more detail. I think that's where we go in tonight. Um, so, moving forward, we have got more things to look at for you to make sure it's a success. Thank you. Thanks, Council.
So the preferred provider is nested kids undercover. Could you say that again? Nested kids undercover. Submissions and also responses from referral authorities, and the officers recommend that council issue a notice of decision to grant a permit subject to the conditions contained in attachment one to the agenda. Thank you, Director Swart. Are there any questions from the gallery on this issue? Thank you. Um, can I look for a mover of this recommendation, please? Councillor Bussell and a seconder, Councillor Benson. Councillor Bussell, did you want to talk on the recommendation? Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, it is a relatively straightforward subject. Just want to say I'm going to do Thank you. Uh, any other councillor to talk on the subdivision? Councillor Harry? Thank you, Mayor Rees. Um, so, I mean, apparently, at face value, it is an inoffensive little subdivision. Um, also, many would regard it. Uh, however, I just want to take a, a brief moment to um, explore native vegetation removal and, and just the framework behind that. Um, because this does involve native vegetation removal, they need. It's, it's relatively minor, the proposed removal, vegetation to be removed. However, I just want to set the context. Um, you have to keep in mind that Victoria is the most clear state in Australia. So you can go all over the place and you can look at trees and go, wow, well, we've got a lot of trees. Um, however, when, when you consider the fact that 79% of them have been cleared, you might go out and look at those trees and think, oh gee, we don't quite have as many trees as we thought. We have very few trees that we really need to protect. Now, the Victoria Auditor General's Office released a report explaining that as a whole, the state is absolutely failing in its no net loss of vegetation, unequivocally. So, ironically, the net gain report, in terms of net gain of vegetation, reported a net loss of around 10,000 hectares in 2022, I think it was. So just that's the context in which we operate. So you come back to a planning subdivision, such as this one, and it's the removal of a very small tree, very, very small bifurcated tree, and offsets will be paid, granted. However, and I read from the report of the Victoria, Victorian Board of the General's Office, councils are not consistently applying the mitigation hierarchy. Under the mitigation hierarchy, Council should approve the removal of native vegetation only as a last resort. They must first be clear that it is unavoidable and is always minimised. So if Council do not apply the mitigation hierarchy, offsetting becomes the default position. Now, it's probably not the planning application to die in the ditch over. Um, and, and granted, as the planning report highlights, there are a lot of gains and a lot of benefits a whole tranche of, of what's defined as planted vegetation at the southern boundary, which is going to be put into a reserve. So, so oh, you know, then there's some vegetation on the western boundary, which is also deemed planted and can be removed without a permit application and offsets. But on, on the whole, you could argue that it's a favourable outcome. Oh, very much near an end. Yes, quickly end up there, Jack. Yep, 
So at the end of the day, could that single tree have been retained? Probably. Does it suggest the default position of um, offsetting? I'm not sure. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Larry. Any other council like to talk on the recommendation? Councillor Russell is the mover. You are allowed as a rebuttal on anything there. Would you like to, before you do, does any other council want to talk on the recommendation? No, Councillor Russell. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I just want to just cut off by the name of the So, the two things about the year. There's two red gum seedlings, 23 to 5 years old, I would estimate. Uh, they are very, very simple trees. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillors. I'll put the recommendation to the vote. All those in favour? And the recommendation is carried. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Director Swart. Item 15.3 is the um, Create Increasing Business Case and Concept Design. Thank you. Um, in October last year, Council endorsed the draft Mangarena Free Create Increasing Business Case and Concept Design for public exhibition. Um, the document is a master plan for the future of the Wangarena Create Increasing and the current services of the Wangarena Art Gallery and Performing Arts Centre. Um, the public exhibition process of the plan has been completed and a summary of the feedback received is included in the Council Agenda as Attachment 2. Uh, the feedback provides general support for the plan and no changes are proposed in response to the feedback. Officers re recommend that Council consider the feedback received and adopts the Wangarana Grape of Precinct Business Case and Concept Design, which is the final step in the Council approval process. Thank you, Director. Are there any questions from the gallery on this one? No, thank you. Can I look for a mover of this recommendation? Councillor Grant and seconded by, sorry, Councillor Fitzpatrick. Uh, Councillor Grant, did you want to talk on the recommendation? Uh, yes, um, to say that I'm pleased that we've, um, you know, after consultation, after a huge amount of work that's gone into this process, that we're, we're now at, at the point where we can move forward. Um, we've gone to The other 
situation and I believe is the visit to centre. We've spent thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars on marketing the University of Wayne And we seem to have a concept now that the visit to centre is going to become all digital. We're going to find our way around the space that we lose by moving with the iPad talking to iPads and I have the last two days talking to computers on telephone and I'm just about over talking to kids and stuff in relationship to moving forward. The period of operation is going to be, I believe, between 10 and 2, the two uh, 10 and 2 of the day. It doesn't jump off how that's going to actually work. I would say this uh, corner of precinct out the floor would be one of the most busiest corners we're going to have in Wayne Garrett. Going forward, we've got uh, 1,600 lots being developed, plus in Mangrata, it's going to be a far bigger, busier place vehicle-wise. Everyone says, yes, we can walk 800 metres and do a loop march around Mangrata to go and find our information and go wherever you want to go. Well, I don't think there's anyone in this chamber today, if they had to do 800 metres or 50 metres, I know which one they'd rather be doing 50 metres than an 800 metre march around Mangrata. The problem I have with the concept of design and it's addressing to take away the car parking and see the uh, visitor centre I don't think is going to answer the, is the holy grail, especially the amount of money that we're spending on the places where I cannot support going further and to address those issues. And I know these issues, Mr Mayor, are brought up in relation to a car parking strategy that we're going to have. So I would like to be the other way around. I think we've got the car before the war. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ben. Councillor Eric. Thank you, Mayor Rees. Um, perhaps first, just to address a couple of the points that some colleagues have raised. But with respect to the cost of the whole proposal, um, maybe put it in context the gym upgrades and, and the sum of the pool combined, the, the sum of a great deal more than the proposed cost of this proposal. Um, and, and I guess I don't need to go into the extensive um, uh, explanation about the economic benefits and that broad concept of economic activity, which is not particularly one I subscribe heavily to anyway, but I mean, tourism, arts tourism, culture tourism is greater than sports, it's greater than wineries. Um, we often do a lot of those other things without questioning. Um, and, and I have to quickly mention that the arts can enrich lives in really complex and diverse ways. And it's not just that economic benefit, but so many social benefits for our local community to gain from having a vibrant and well-supported and facilitated arts um, facilities and, and vibrant culture that accompanies it. Um, briefly, I'm glad that there has been mention for the future of this future project, because this future project will take a number of years potentially to get off the ground if it's approved and followed through with. But then, of course, there's a limited footprint there, so the concept of going up a second story, it is noted it will be explored in a detailed design. What do we want to do in 50 years' time when, as Council Benson says, the town is much larger? And um, just onto the point of contention around, I guess, the whole car parking thing. It's not that we have got to walk. I mean, we, we were built to walk. Like, it's not such the issue around spaces and the physical car spaces, except for certain demographics. Um, it's, it's that the culture, I think, we need to shift our, our approach to our relationship with walking and, and see it as a blessing rather than an obligation and shift that culture and, and potentially change some of our infrastructure projects, you know? Imagine if there was a, a, an incredible green corridor that led from the multi-storey car park to the art centre, mm. for example, and it went through some of the laneways and out the back here. Mm. If, if we designed things such that the walk was a beautiful time to connect with people about the performance or the exhibition you just saw, a beautiful time to just enjoy <laughs> the greenery around you, it's not got to walk, it's not an obligation, it's not a too much. Um, but anyway, that's a cultural thing that we'll keep chipping away at. Otherwise, the proposal has a lot of positives and I think they've been spoken to in the papers and in people's submissions, and thank you for all of those submissions, by the way. 
Thank you, Councillor Eric. Um, any other council like to talk, Councillor Fall? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just acknowledging uh, Clay Amber and also Grady Vic, who helped us to get to this point, uh, as well as the staff that put a lot of time and effort in getting out that message and getting the feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fuller. Um, any other council before I go back to Irene as the mover? No, I'd just like to also point out that um, uh, prior to exploration of car parking, a planning permit will have to be sourced, and parking and other considerations around that will have to be mitigated in this planning application to go forward. Um, uh, even though we might approve this process as now, and having this uh, thing that we want to go ahead with, we have to go forward through a full planning process like anybody else to make sure that we can accommodate what we need to. Um, so thank you. Uh, Councillor Grant as the mover, would you like to end the conversation? Uh, yes, yes. Um, and just to um, um, acknowledge um, the comments that the other councillors made in, in terms of their support or otherwise of um, the, um, the business case and concept design. I mean, we've got, a, as I said um, in, in my moving of the recommendation, we've got a lot of work to do still. Now, we've had the principal support from the community around this. There's still a lot of work to do in terms of the money that we will get or need to get to support this project. Um, you know, I, I certainly um, uh, endorse Councillor Herring's um, comments about um, walking not being an obligation, but it should be a pleasure. And, and it, it behoves us as a council to look at ways and, and certainly work on ways that we can actually make that much more of a pleasure around the rural city because it shouldn't be just about parking, it should be about the amenity of our, our community and, and how do we improve that. So here's an opportunity to do a whole lot of things, enrich the, the cultural and social fabric of our community and, and make it a better place to be. So um, step, the next step forward. Thanks, Councillor Graham. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'll put the recommendation to vote to all councillors, all those in favour, and the recommendation is carried. Uh, thank you. We'll move on to uh, item number uh, 17, 17.1 minutes of advisory reports. So the, uh, the recommendation to council notes the minutes of the advisory committee report, which was the order of this committee meeting on the 22nd of September. There's no question from the gallery. I look for a mover of that report, Councillor Fitzpatrick and a seconder, Councillor Herry. Um, Councillors, no, uh, if there's no talk on that motion, we'll put the recommendation of the vote. All those in favour? And that recommendation is carried. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that brings to a conclusion the formal part of our, um, our main part of the meeting here today. We will go down to uh, public question time. And I'll just read a couple of questions first that came in by writing and uh, we'll get those and then I'll go to the gallery. If you've got any questions, we ask you to step forward to the microphone, push the little uh, button which has got the man speaking on it there. Um, state your name for the record so we can have it on record and um, because it needs to be included in the minutes and then ask your question. You have a, a quantity of two questions. If we cannot answer your question today, we will endeavour to get back to you ASAP within this week to answer those questions. As a question may come up that we don't have the answers directly in front of us, but we will get back to you. Um, so the first question that I will read is uh, from Venetia Contessa, and the question is, increased disabled parking around Wangaratta District Special School and change to existing parking restrictions around the school zones this is a question will be, um, I'll, I'll get Marcus Goonan to answer that question in relation to that disabled parking around that special school. Thank you, Director Goonan. Thank you, Mayor Reese, um, and thank you for your question. So, unfortunately, schools are exempt from most of the planning requirements, which often means parking is inadequate, and we see that throughout the, uh, the towns um, and throughout this municipality. Um, then falls back on council to resolve these parking issues. So officers have been out to have a look at the school and the surrounding uh, parking requirements of residents. Uh, we believe that there's some additional space on street, which is the only place that we can obviously access space for parking for um, all abilities, for an additional all abilities parking bay. And officers will also review the existing parking limits in conjunction with the residents and the school to see if uh, future time changes would assist with that. Expect that work to take about four to six weeks. Thank you, Director Goodman. 
Uh, a second question is by Monique Kalina, and her question is, could Council please provide an update on the initiation, on, on initiating the diversity and inclusivity reference group or advisory committee agreed to in March 2021 Council meeting, and are there terms of reference uh, publicly available? Uh, again, I look to Director Newman for this answer. Yep. Um, thanks for the question, Mon. I actually think you were probably working on this project when you were at Council. Um, so we have had a little bit of a delay in, uh, in pulling this together, but we are reforming the Diversity and Inclusion Committee with an NLI which is out at the moment and the first meeting to be held in late March. As part of the development of the Access and Inclusion Framework, uh, we will also be looking to advertise for external working groups over the next two months and the terms of reference will be developed uh, in advance of that group and then amended and agreed to by the working group. Great. Great answer. Thank you, Director Kernan. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a couple of questions, please raise your hand and I'll ask you to come forward and, uh, and direct your question into the microphone. So, I know over the back, you'd you like to ask a question? Yes. Sure. Yes, please. <laughs> please come forward. Sorry. Uh, and uh, just press the little button with the man's face on it with a couple of lines coming out of it. And, and just state your name. My name is Gordon Patterson. I'm here today with my wife, several neighbours. We all uh, live in close proximity to the organics plant situated in Bowser. And the organics plant is affecting all of us to live in that area. Um, my question, I'm new to the meetings, and I've read the, uh, the streets, so I've changed what I was going to do down the line of that. Quickly, um, I'm going to ask. If council was aware that prior to commencing the uh, organics plant, locals were never uh, consulted in relation to it um, and didn't know about it until it was actually being built. Um, something I would expect council would know about. And the other question that I would ask is, we still have ongoing issues regarding the reporting of odours that are still occurring. Um, the cans will be aware of the problem. Thanks, Gordon. Um, Could member on two makers do we meet out there tomorrow? As well? Uh, I think he says that. Maybe he's tomorrow. But they can check on our yeah, tomorrow. 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 At five o'clock. And I think that's an open invitation to all residents if you want to meet out there to yeah, do over a few minutes. Oh, good. Great. Thank you. Good. Um, Marcus, a, a, a reply for that or a, a reply tomorrow out there at the meeting? And I, put, put in it. I think it's to answer the first question. So um, is a a process that we need to go through with NPA to have anything like this approved and that includes um, notifications to residents. So the notifications to the residents was done as per the requirements of the EPA. Um, so that, that is that part of it. On um, the second part of the question was probably do councillors know that we have had some other concerns yep. over the yep. and, and, preceding time? And then my councillor, yeah. Director Goonan, does bring them to us to say that we had a complaint about odour and it was checked out, etc. Um, I, I'm not sure how many times that they have come to us, but there has been numerous times that they have come to us in our briefing session on a Monday to talk to us about certain odours and uh, and then what was done to try and investigate those odours, you know, whether it be at night or in the middle of the night or in the afternoon or mornings, etc. Um, I don't want to make any good because I don't want what you said there. I think, um, in relation to the reporting, is it good enough if something's reported at three o'clock, it's not investigated for a five time period when it's an odor? Uh, I'm not saying it's not good enough. And uh, cancel me to look what's going on. Sure. I'm not, I'm not sure of the right um, capabilities of whether we can get people out there to investigate it or, or not in those short periods of time, Mark, as I, I look to you for advice on that. Yeah, it's an odor complaint that comes through at three o'clock. Um, and we receive it, it depends how it's, how 
how it comes through the system, obviously, we'll investigate it straight away. Yeah. Um, there's also the ability for people to call the on board staff outside of hours, and, and we have recently changed the way we go about that um, to make that um, system work a little bit better. We had uh, EPA come out on site and actually view how we go about these things and kind of comfortable with the approach we've taken. Uh, Odors are difficult because they are sometimes there only for very short periods of time and, and move quite quickly. So um, I'm not saying we're going to get all of them, but we have put every step in place that we believe we need to, to, to uh, at least be able to deal with the ones that we have. Thank you. Thanks, Gordon. Thank you. Did you have another question, there, Gordon? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, I could. Um, We were looking to get EPA um, numbers of reports to EPA to get it cancelled today. Um, due to FOI, we just wouldn't get it in the time. Yep. Um, we're trying to put this question in the council where, the, you know, with the reporting, we, as a resident, we have to duplicate our reports. We have to ring both the council and the EPA. And now, council was expecting residents to basically fill out a questionnaire which also the EPA does so here's me that we're doing the job for the cancer um, can there not be a better way of doing this mm. Mm. not sure on that one but let's investigate it unless you've got something but the, the, the issue is that these uh, smells most of the time are quite isolated. So what we're trying to do is actually figure out exactly where they're coming from and where they're heading to. So what we need to know right at the time of smelling them is the direction of the wind, um, what the conditions are like, etc. So we can actually physically get to site and see what's going on. Um, it's not a perfect science and it's a difficult one. I, I, I don't doubt that and it must be frustrating duplicating that evidence. But the reason we ask for that is by the time we've got out to have a chat with you, often the wind's change, so the smell's not there and we're unclear of where it was coming from at the time. So that's why we do ask for that additional information. What that's actually led to is that we now don't turn wind roads when there's certain breezes going in certain directions during certain times because we'll find that we're getting a lot of complaints over those periods. So um, the, the information that you're providing, it's not, not going unread or not going unlooked at. We, we have changed our processes, and I, I think if we look at the amount of complaints that we were getting before Christmas to what we're getting now, and uh, please don't shoot me in because it may not be 100% correct, that certainly dropped off. Right, but Believe me, the meeting tomorrow, and uh, I know I'm trying to get out there for it myself. It's in my diary. I've got conflict and things. I'll, I'll be out there. I think Harvey's going to be there too. So, yeah, we'll, we'll certainly be out there as councillors to help uh, have a look at the situation and make sure your voice is heard. Great, thanks, Gordon. Are there any other questions from the gallery on, on any issues? Please, yes. Once again, just for your record there, please uh, turn the button on. It should light up red there. Is it? No, no, on the top of the microphone, it should light up red. That's it. Perfectly. Just state your name again for the record. I was just wondering, Dan, have you got any with the maybe I need something. It was, I got a report from somebody yesterday, and I was just trying to find it on my phone, and I'm not sure whether I've sent it on that. There's a certain, um, I spoke to a fellow who wants to de-sex his cat, and they've got it in Corowa at the moment, where the government is offering a discount of 50%, and he sent me the link to it, and I've just been trying to find it to bring it up to talk about it in here, but I can't find it. Uh, but I'll look again shortly and forward that to our director here. That is New South Wales, though. Um, and uh, the fellow has a couple of cats he wants to take six here in Wangaratta. He's a pensioner and cannot afford to, I think it was $250 per cat. Um, and uh, I think the rebate was about, um, uh, it was around about $80 or $90 rebate on my pension, which he thought was great. So we're just looking for that. But thanks, Mary. Uh, I, I can't say that. We have to, it'll have to see what the government's going to give us for it, and then we'll go from there. 
So it's a process. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. Thanks. Um, any other questions from the gallery, please? Anne, please come forward once again. And again, Anne, state your name. Uh, so Anne Anderson. Um, I first want to give you a Fade it to a fader colour. 
But anyway, it's not my job to change it. It's my job to alert you to what I think is waste. Uh, and that's not a question, though, Mr. Fox. This is question time, and I'm happy for you to ask a question, not make statements. Really? Our previous people that got up, they asked good my, questions. My question is, would you, would, would, would you reduce the ink use in this? I'll make sure that your agenda next time has the little dots on it. Thank you. My second question, sir, is that um, I have written a number of times and I've had um, email backwards and forwards between officers of the council of notifying me or the general public when we have an item for auction. The CEO after a 12-month period, gave me a disposal document. And that's in the public record, the disposal document. It really doesn't do the job. If council wanted to sell that desk tomorrow, and they were going to send it to Pickles, or whoever the auction house was, surely it is not much more difficult to add one email address and that could be the chronicle or me or anybody Brendan. Uh, thanks brian uh, i think in our discussions previously we had agreed that we would put things going to auction into our shire page in the chronicle uh, we haven't done that in recent times and i have reminded some of the staff who are responsible for those activities on that this morning, so I would expect you to start to see those appearing on the Shire page when things are going to auction. They'll still be for auction yeah. at the Pickles Auction House, but to notify you if you want to find it, but you can certainly hop on the Pickles Auction at any time and see everybody's disposal of items, not just councils. Good. I'll be delighted when I see an advert in the Chronicle that we have something to sell. I've been at this for three years. And I'm only 86, I'm going to last 100, so I'll, 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 I'll keep on asking until you do something. I would expect nothing else. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vox. Are there any other questions from the gallery? Yes, please, ma'am. Come forward. Vivian Burns again. My question is regarding the Pickles Auction. It's a, uh, another large area that's not really being used or well utilised. Is there any um, plan for the future expansion or use of the trolley track? It's a large area which is not well used. Agreed, 100%. Um, do you want to talk to this, Brendan? 100% agree with you. Good. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's a really useful space that is well underutilised, I agree. There is a master plan, I think it's called the Wangaroda South urban design master plan or something to that effect that was done quite some time ago and it actually it actually proposed that there were potentially uh, an opportunity to build some other sporting fields inside the trotting track be they hockey or soccer or something like that um, we have looked at that a couple of times and in fact um, on one trip recently when we were doing a bit of a tour of things with the councillors we did stop and have a bit of a walk around have a look at that so um, there, there definitely has been identified that there is an opportunity to, to further develop it for more recreation use. We don't have a current project to, to progress that, but it's, it's definitely identified and something that is being thought about, I guess, would be the answer. Didn't you? So there's no, my second question, so there's no uh, plans for future expansion of the trading industry, the harness racing industry, um, here in Wingaretta? I think the answer is probably not, although I can't really speak for harness racing Victoria. Um, I think that, that track is generally considered pretty small and pretty tight by the harness racing fraternity. So as a result, it's not widely used. I think they have two or three meetings a um, year or something like that there. Um, and I suspect with the track in its current configuration, they're probably unlikely to do any more than that. And there probably isn't space, I don't think, to really completely reconfigure the track. Um, but beyond that, that's really the harness racing majority of the time. It's a waste of space, though, isn't it? Um, as Brendan said, uh, being in it's a, it's a great space, but a great underutilised space at the moment in a primary. Thank you. Great parking, great everything else. Irene? Uh, 
Uh, can I just um, perhaps yeah, talk to Vivian's question? Um, when we were administrators, we, we, we certainly looked at um, the trial track and, 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 and trying to invigorate um, that space um, with the, the trotting industry and then also greyhounds, but unfortunately that wasn't, you know, something that came over the line. But then also to look at potential for, as um, the CEO said, um, you know, for playing fields. But for that to become a reality, uh, we also would need the support of the state government to provide us with funding to be able to develop all of that. Yeah. Um, but it's certainly on the agenda, and you know you're very correct in saying that it, it, it is a, a space that's underutilised, and, and we should be able to um, do much more with it. But in order for that to happen, we need to have a bit more in the way of dollars. So that's thanks. Thanks, Vivian. Well, there's no further questions, ladies and gentlemen. I'll um, I'll call our meeting today to a close. I'd like to thank you all for turning up, being a part of the meeting. I'd just like to say goodbye to one of our. Um, my uh, executive assistant Rebecca is moving to a different role here in the council, but still with council. And welcome our new EA here with Amy uh, Newman down the back there. So uh, we might have a few different places. So thank you, everyone. Thank you to, to Rebecca and the followers for the great work you've done here um, in supporting, especially Brenda and myself and, uh, and all the councillors. So thank you, and we look forward to. Uh,